As a reminder, the group sessions for all males for the Seven Deadly Sins Q&A is going to be next weekend. And then the following weekend after that is going to be the male and female group session for the Seven Deadly Sins Q&A. And if you're interested, you can look at the link in the description box below under Regal Change Academy. Now, with that being said, let's get started with today's video. Today's video is going to be on the topic of why the narcissist is still obsessed with you and is obsessed with you after they realize that you're doing better. And sometimes it's not always the case that it's because you're doing better. Sometimes it's just that they literally have nothing better to do with their lives. And sometimes because your source of validation and your source of just attention is going to be the most important factor in determining their sense of worthiness in the world. Because if they can get someone like you, someone that has integrity, someone that has morals, if they can get someone like you to fall into their reality, and when I say their reality, what I mean is their delusion, because they don't live in reality. They live in a false sense of reality and they live in a world that is entirely fantasized. They, they might as well live in Neverland, okay? These are the people that are never going to grow up. These are the lost boys and the lost girls that have not had any chance whatsoever to actually make it in life. And you know what? That's not even always true because they could have had opportunities to make themselves better, but they didn't. They they chose the path of degeneracy. They chose the path of pride, excessive pride. And you'll know it when you see a man based off of how he carries himself and how he tries to dominate people, not by a sense and a place of righteousness or a sense of overt superiority, like that, or those are going to be the things that you're going to have to look out for the most, really, when it comes to the males. When it comes to the females, sometimes the women that I've noticed that are most narcissistic are the loud and obnoxious and very stubborn individuals. And these kinds of people will become obsessed with you when they start to see that you're doing better without them. Because now you have something that they don't have. You have inner strength. You have inner stability. And that to them is a threat to their reality, quote unquote. It's a, it's a threat to what they perceive to be true. And I think deep down these narcissists know that what they're doing is highly irresponsible. But you'll know that something is just off with these people, right? Something is just not right. Something's not adding up. There's, there's something going on. And what I've experienced most recently is something that is very, it's very abstract in its nature, but it's also very, it's very embarrassing on their part. And it's very just, it's hard to watch because there's some women that I've turned down over the past few months that cannot take the fucking hint of like, look, I do not want to talk to you anymore. We, we are not compatible. And I let this woman know that, look, I have compassion for you, but I don't think we're compatible because that's something that I like to say because I want to show that, look, I'm, it's not really personal. We're just not compatible. And that's how I let them down easy because I understand that rejection for anybody is not fun because I've been through it. You know, when you've been through rejection enough times, when you've been neglected, when you've been abused, you start to realize the value of certain things and certain virtues. And so that is something that I'm willing to grant to another person. However, my judgment I will say was definitely off with this person. This person came off as a very like like a nurturing individual. She seemed to be very pleased with 
just how life was going for her. She had, she was very, obviously she's, she's very attractive and, you know, most guys would turn their heads when she walks by and she was the one that placed herself in my vicinity and she was the one that tried to initiate contact first with me. And I, I took the bait <laughs> because, you know, I, I felt, I felt she was attractive. And when I looked into her eyes, I didn't necessarily see the darkness, but then after a while, after a while vetting her, I started to see these certain inconsistencies and I was like, Hmm, well, she's not really as on point as it, she makes it look like she is. Hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, maybe we're just not compatible. I don't think this is going to work out. And so I let her know, and yet she's still obsessing over me to this day. And I've placed boundaries. I have ignored her. I've tried to walk away. And all I can think to myself is, look, this is, a, this is embarrassing. Like you're, you're fighting for somebody's attention that doesn't, that has made it clear that they do not want to talk to you, that they think that they're incompatible with a relationship. And yet you're still fighting for this person's attention. Like it makes my stomach uneasy because I was at the squat rack and minding my own business. And there she goes. She starts flipping her hair all around, bending over in certain ways around me. And I walk away from the squat rack, even though I've got like, I've got more sets to do on the squat rack, but I'm, I'm not about this. I don't, I don't want to be around this anymore. So I go somewhere else across the gym and she follows me and she continues to follow me. And so what I'm going to have to start doing now is th this is one of the reasons why it's so important to vet people before you actually invest more time and effort into them. I didn't go on a date with this woman. I hadn't spent a dime on this woman. And I encourage all men out there, do not spend a dime on a woman that is not showing you genuine romantic and visceral desire. Because if, if, you were, if you're just going with it and you're just like, oh, well, she seems nice, huh? you're probably going to end up in a, in a not so good place. And for all of the women out there, if you have a narcissist that is that's a male narcissist that is stalking you in some way and you've set boundaries and women a lot of times this is so funny <laughs> it's not funny but it is kind of funny when i'm in my consultations and certain women are like yeah i've i'd set boundaries well what kind of boundaries did you set well i said i'd see him around that's not a boundary <laughs> that's that's not a boundary okay that's a that's something that <laughs> like if you're going to say, I, I'll see you around. Hello. Like you're, you're still leaving that door open. You're still leaving a portal open spiritually for this person to be in your life. And sometimes you'll even say like, and this is something that I've realized as well with this woman is even when I said I had compassion for her, but I don't think we're compatible I, I, I gave her that compassion because I, we had built something at least together. And even though we hadn't really gone out or anything, we were just talking and now I'm getting to the point where I realize, okay, this is someone that I actually need to close the spiritual portals to. And so women out there to close the spiritual portals, what I mean by that is you have to really understand that you need to stick to your decision to let go of this person because they, they are unhealthily attaching themselves to you and also unhealthily detaching from you. They might, they might not even know how to detach some of these narcissists out here. They don't even know how to detach. And so one thing that you can learn about how to detach healthily is to simply place boundaries. Like I don't want to talk to you anymore. I don't want to communicate in any way with you anymore. I would prefer if we kept our relationship with some distance, you know, you, sometimes if there's like a family member and they're a narcissist, 
and you're going to like see them at like family get togethers or whatever, it's best to just love them from a distance. Okay. It's just, it's better to just love them from a distance. And so you can say, uh, look, I, I can get together once a month. Like if you, if you have like a family get together, they get together every Sunday or whatever, and you, you don't want to go every Sunday. You say, look, I, I would prefer if we, I would prefer only going once a month or I'd prefer only going twice a month. In fact, you can even pick which day I come to the dinner party each month on those four days out of those four days in the month, you can pick which day. Cause that way you're giving them the sense of like choice. And sometimes that's really good because you're making them in a healthy way show that you're willing to, cause it's not really going to bother you any other way. Like it's not going to really affect you if you really are available any of those times and they get to pick which day you go. Like it's not going to really affect you. So there's no real repercussion of allowing them the opportunity, but it still allows them to just make it feel like they have some kind of uh, control <laughs> because that's what narcissists love, right? They have some form of control, even though they really don't. So in a way you're kind of, it's not, you're not really manipulating this person because that's not what it is at all. You're just giving them a choice. And sometimes you have to just treat the narcissist like a child <laughs> because they are children. They are the lost boys and the lost girls that just never grew up. Right? So you have to just give them the illusion of choice <laughs> sometimes, even though it's really not going to change like who you are and what you're about altogether. But when the narcissist starts to become more and more obsessed with you and they see that you're doing better and they realize that you're doing better, you have to accept that this person is a demon that wants possession, possession of you. And some of you may say, wow, that's kind of extreme, but really is it? Like people that have really been involved with narcissistic people, highly narcissistic people, even if they're not like super narcissistic, even they're just, if they're just a little bit narcissistic, um, you'll know that these people do have some kind of void that cannot be filled in their hearts and souls. And they are spiritually possessed by some kind of entity that wants to possess you right? Well, why does the demon, why does this entity, this spiritual demon, why does this demon want to possess you? Why does it want control? Because it wants power. It wants to feel powerful. It wants to feel worthy of power. It wants to feel like it has influence over your life in a dramatic way. It wants to feel like if you this again, this person with strong moral integrity, if they can manipulate you, well, then it's like, it's like, how would you say? It's like a sheep trying to manipulate the lion into not eating the sheep, right? That's, that's what they believe it's like. They believe that it's like that, even though it's really not. Like you, you're just doing your thing. You're just being a lion. And in fact, you don't even really want the sheep right now. You want that Giselle over there. <laughs> like you don't really care about the sheep because the Giselle tastes better. <laughs> I don't know. This, this metaphor is kind of weird right now, but <laughs> you guys understand what I'm saying. Like you're just being who you are. And they want to pretend like they can influence you into being someone that you're not. That's what it really boils down to. And it gets easier to deal with these kinds of people when you start to realize that these, this is a demonically possessed person. And this woman that is in my life currently, and she's not really, she's not even in my life. She's, she's in my life just because she's forcing herself to be there. And, it's almost like now that I'm realizing that she 
is mentally sick, it's so much easier to deal with the situation. It's like, okay, I can just look at the situation for what it is. And it's funny because so many men <laughs> that I hear, like they practically just idolize her and worship her, which is what the narcissist wants, right? This is what the narcissist wants. And I didn't realize how many men she, she has like had this kind of effect on. She's very sneaky. She's very, she's very deceitful. Jezebel spirit, a hundred percent all the way. And it just goes to show that it's, it reminds me of in star Wars when Yoda and Mace Windu, who were like the most powerful Jedi and the most powerful forces of like of good in the force were sitting with chancellor Palpatine right before them, which is the Darth Lord, Darth Sidious, when he was still the chancellor. And he, this was in Attack of the Clones, the second episode of Star Wars. And they're having a conversation and even Yoda says, yeah, the, the dark side clouds everything, like impossible it is to see the future. Meanwhile, in retrospect, you can see Chancellor Palpatine, this evil figure, realizing that the dark side's power and influence is even controlling the force of good that they cannot predict exactly what's going to happen. And so on your path to godliness and to righteousness, you're still going to have these trials where sometimes you're going to be dealing with higher level demons and spirits where they can easily manipulate and deceive you. And that's going to be what happens when you realize who they are and you're going to think to yourself, okay, I have to really start moving different now. Gotcha. Roger that. Okay. I'm going to start moving different. I'm going to have to start really paying more attention to my surroundings and just being who I am. And I'm not saying that you should be paranoid or anything like that, or you need to like look over your shoulder all the time, but it does make you uneasy. I'm not going to lie. It makes, it makes me uneasy. Like just having this woman follow me around and just, you know, pining after my attention, even though I've said no, it's un, it's, it's, I'm starting to realize what it's like for the women that have so many of these creeper men that are stalking them now. It's, it's like full circle understanding of why women have this weird fear or irrational fear of that. But I get it. I, I understand it. it. It's not a fun feeling. It is creepy. Like part of you wants to just tell these obsessed narcissists, like you're being fucking creepy. <laughs> you, you're being fucking weird. Cut it out. Go somewhere else. But honestly, any kind of attention that you're going to give them is just going to fuel like them even more, especially if they are someone that's really broken, then they're going to just obsess over you even more. And if they continue to obsess over you, the like the more they obsess over you, the more that they are likely have so much more trauma that they don't even want to acknowledge or deal with. And that's just the truth. And what's really weird is after a while, after these obsessed narcissists will see that you're doing better and such, they'll start to play the victim. <laughs> they'll start to play the victim. And then they'll start trying to make you feel guilty about them being the creepy ones. It's, and you, they'll start trying to gaslight you into believing that like you should be sorry for them or because they're going to try to play on your empathy. They're going to try to play on, on that. So be careful out there, guys. These these people are no joke, and they're some high-level individuals, and that's why I encourage men and women to vet these men and women that you're dealing with properly because thank God I, I saw the, the red flags. Thank God I was like, okay, something's not adding up. We're just going to cut this off right now. We're going to we're going to be cutthroat about it. And that's how I live my life. I don't let people in very easily. I don't let people into my life just because they're around me. And just because you're around me doesn't mean that you're a part of my life. That's, that's another thing that you have to 
have the mindset of because sometimes you can trick yourself into believing that these people that are in your life are, are in your life, but they're really not. You can be around. This is something I realized with family and some long term friends that I'm no longer f like around. Something I realized was you can be around these people your whole life and realize that they were never even with you and there all along. They were lost in crazy town. <laughs> they, they were just, they were off, they were off somewhere else. God knows where they were at. They, they were lost and they still are lost. And there's nothing that you can do. You can pray for them. You can pray for their deliverance. But that's it. That, that's all you can do. So with that being said, I hope this message was useful and insightful. And until next time, peace be with you.